Hello, welcome Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. It's Wednesday, September 21st. I am Shaka Sali. Today, we'll discuss the significance of 50 years of Tanzania's independence. Tanzania stands out as a stable nation in a region that has witnessed some of the most vicious civil conflicts in Africa. But could be said that some two decades after the introduction of Marit Party politics, the ruling party of Chama Chama Pinduzi, or CCM, still behaves as if the country were a one-party state. My colleague Paul Sisko has more on the story. Tanzania is known for snow-capped Mount Kilimanjaro, one of the highest freestanding mountains in the world. Beautiful Kilimanjaro is actually three volcanoes in northern Tanzania, the largest climbing 5,895 meters above the sea. And the greatest wildlife show on Earth, the Serengeti ecosystem in northern Tanzania, stretches into southwestern Kenya and is home to the largest mammal migration anywhere. And over the course of its nearly 50 years of independence, Tanzania's politics have been much more stable than those of its East African neighbors. Since 1977, one party, the Chama Cha Mapenduzi Party, or the Party of the Revolution, has dominated Tanzania's political landscape. Party leader and President Chikaya Kikwete won a second and final five-year term last October. The election was relatively free of violence, but on a playing field overwhelmingly dominated by the party in power, the CCM. President Chikaiwa Kikwete. Tanzania is internationally known for having a government that respects the rule of law, human rights, and that establishes democracy. The judiciary and parliament conduct their affairs with no government interference, and the government is doing its best to uphold these two structures of the nation. Tanzanians have the freedom to worship and express themselves, and the media is totally free. We have also increased our ability to collect government revenues. Tanzanians were taking part in their fourth successive election last October, one, and some observers say, controlled by the CCM. In 2005, Tanzanians also went to the polls and first elected Kikwete with an 80% majority, seen here voting in his Chalinze constituency. But like his predecessors, Kikwete's victory is largely credited to the CCM, a party that became popular because of its founder, Julius K. Nyere. At independence nearly 50 years ago, on December 9, 1961, Nyeri became Tanzania's prime minister and was elected president the following year. He led the country until his retirement in 1985 and is remembered for his socialist policy of Ujamaa, or brotherhood, which forced many Tanzanians into communal villages where food, land, and income were shared. Nyeri was greatly admired on the continent, but his economics were not. Tanzania is East Africa's second largest economy, but still is one of the world's poorest countries. Political analyst Azabel Watama says in the past, voters overlooked the mistakes of the CCM party. You know, I mean, even if they make mistakes, you just you know, blink and get quiet about it. But because CCM itself, under the leadership of His Excellency uh, Dr. Jakaya Kikwete, has actually removed a lot of the fetishism about CCM. You know, I mean, CCM has become like any other party, you know? I mean, you know, it has, you know, it has the same fractions, it has the same in, in fightings as, as the other small parties. You know, and that in itself, I mean, for me as an analyst, has allowed me to say the population has been liberated from, you know, feeling that it is obliged to vote CCM. Political pluralism was introduced in the 1990s, but critics say the state and ruling party are one in Tanzania with the CCM party and its president dominating political affairs. Opposition parties are widely considered to have little or no chance of gaining power. Less so on the semi-autonomous island nation of Zanzibar, made up of Unguja and Pemba Islands. Zanzibar united with mainland Tanganyika to become the United Republic of Tanzania in 1964, after a revolt against the island's Arab leaders by the African majority. Elections have always been controversial and sometimes violent in Zanzibar. But in a July 2010 referendum, voters accepted proposals for rival political parties to share power. A hopeful development, says journalist Alay Saleh. Uh, political parties have been having a lot of political space, a lot of uh, opportunities to air their, um, their uh, manifestos, 
in their programs. And uh, also, we have not had any, if I can say, any incident or rather few incidents of any violence happening in Zanzibar. This is contrary to all other political times. All politics aside, citizens in Zanzibar and Tanzania today are mourning the loss of over 200 people killed in the tragic ferry incident in the Indian Ocean just over a week ago. Paul Sisko, VOA News. Thank you very much, Paul, for that.